uh, thank you to Iconic for having me to speak about dogs. Uh, dog body language is one of my favorite topics and it's a perfect day, International Dog Day to do it. And um, so I think it's really, really, really important to be able to speak dog. And we know a hell of a lot about dogs. So dogs try and speak to us all of the time. Uh, they constantly try and communicate with us. And when that communication goes wrong, it ends up in things like bites or miscommunication or your dog ends up with generally a behavioral issue. And it's really, really easy because they're, they're trying to tell us all the time. Dogs don't want to bite people, I can tell you that, um, and they'll do everything to avoid conflict. So when we talk about dog body language or dog language, um, most of the, obviously they don't speak they don't speak to us. So most of their communication comes through the, the form of how they present their body, how they look at us with their eyes, how their ears are placed and things like that. They do a few vocalizations, but it's mainly through body language as you can see in the screen here. So there's loads of these online. And if you have a dog, I'd recommend you download one or two of them and just become familiar with the main ones. Don't become obsessive about it. So obviously I'm obsessive about it because I need it for my job, but you just need to know general ones. And the reason I don't want you to get it too obsessed about it is because many of the behaviors that you'll see today and during during this presentation are similar to ones that your dog will do anyway. So when we speak about dog body language, we need to look at the whole dog. It's not just what the dog is doing at that moment. You need to look at their face, their eyes, their ears, their shape of their body, how their tail is, and all that kind of stuff. So you'll see that uh, running through and most of you will hear me say things like lip licking or yawning is a stress signal. And yes, absolutely they are, but not if your dog is tired or your dog has just eaten something delicious and is licking their face. So you have to be really, really kind of mindful when you're talking about dog body language or assessing your dog's body language that you look at the whole environment, the whole dog at that particular time. But dogs will often give very, very subtle communications before something bad happens. And I'll be talking about uh, bites and a little bit of bites today and a little bit about play today. And sometimes people will think, oh, why did my dog do that? I had no warning when actually, in fact, the dog did give you a lot of warnings. It's just that you weren't able to read them. So I'll be talking about as much as I can about that and then hopefully I'll uh, answer some questions at the end. Now all of my images today are dog-dog related because we don't like to put images of people up because they're usually falsified when you're taking, uh, when you ask somebody to act out a certain behavior to provoke a behavior in a dog, it doesn't look as real. So we're using dog-dog images today but they apply the, the same for, for, for people. So speaking dog, when you are working with dogs it's really really important obviously to to learn how to speak dog so that you know what the dog is trying to say to you. Like I work a lot with aggressive cases and aggressive dogs and I've been doing it for about 15 or 16 years and I haven't been bitten yet and I hopefully plan touch wood never to be bitten and that's because constantly the dogs are talking to you so even though I work with dogs who might have high levels of fear and who have bitten before they're always telling you that they're always warning you. So this is a lovely little picture this image of um, this Boston Terrier and there's loads of images on that line and that gives a really, really good indication of what your dog is saying. And they're really cute little things that you can download and you can just have a look at your dog and you can see what your dog is uh, saying. And I think it's really important that anyone that works with dogs, anyone that cares for a dog, anyone who looks after a dog, even if you're nervous of dogs at all, that you become familiar with the doggy language. Uh, we know a lot about it now, so it's really good. So we're going to start with um, what you need to look out for the signs of stress, because the signs of stress, like us all, if we could predict uh, stress in a dog, then we can predict when things are going to be going wrong. So when we're looking at this, and when we're looking at, oh, sorry, went too fast. Um, some of the main signs of stress are lip licking. So lip licking, like this dog in uh, this, this part of your screen, this Labrador here, this is what I talk about lip licking. So it's not when the dog licks from side to side as if wiping something off their face, it's when their tongue sticks out in a very abrupt manner and what they do is lick, lick, lip lick. And that's a sign of stress. And you'll often see if your dog has had maybe a scary experience or they're going in the car or they're doing something that makes them uncomfortable or going to the vets, they might lip lick. And it often comes with um, these ears. So these ears are called cupped ears and it's when the dog moves them slightly back and you can almost see the inner part of the dog's ear. That's the dog, that dog in that picture is telling me that I'm a little bit stressed but I don't mean you any harm because of the cupped ears. Yawning, like this picture of this husky mix above, 
Again, it's not when the dog is tired. You can see that's very much an exaggerated yawn. So it's not a real yawn. And that dog is um, just like people, people do it sometimes and they yawn because they're a little bit stressed and um, because they want to relieve tension in the face and tension in the body. This little Bernie's mountain dog is um, showing a little bit of, as you can see, the hand coming towards you. It's, he, he's backing away with his body language. And the worst thing you can do is reach out at your hand to a dog that's displaying this kind of body language for you because the dog is basically saying, I want some space and it's avoidant, okay? And um, bloodshot eyes, bloodshot eyes um, would be a, in a very extreme scenario. And then below this picture here, we've got this uh, lab again. And this lab is again, because this dog is stressed, this dog is stressed because he's in the car, he doesn't really like car journeys, he just tolerates them. And he's what we call panting. So I always look for panting, especially if I'm working with a dog on a cold day or a dog who hasn't been exercised uh, massively. And if they're panting, then I'm kind of going, they're stressed. And you also see these little lines here, we call them C-shaped lines here, and they let us know that it is kind of a false sense of panting. The dog isn't panting because the dog is hot, the dog is panting because the dog is a little bit stressed, as well as eyes are a bit stressed. One of the most common ones is this shake-off here. So this Doberman is doing what we call a shake-off, and loads of you will see this. So shake-off can be um, a sign of stress, so distress or you stress. So distress is when the dog is uh, not happy stress and new stress is because the dog was happy stress so dogs will often do a shake off if they come across something that scares them and then they'll just shake it off and I would always praise the dog for that behavior because it's a nice way of relieving tension and but a dog will also do that behavior um, when playing with another dog or maybe playing with you and they'll shake off the tension of playing because they will have built up this level of excitement they shake off the excitement in order to calm themselves down again so that can be a very very positive one and it's a very positive one for your dog getting rid of any kind of stress in their body be it good or bad so I always praise a dog for that because I think it's a nice way of the dog being able to calm themselves down independently with, without the help of you and then you can have things like excess shedding so you'll often notice if you bring your dog to the vet and they're a little bit unsure they might start all of a sudden like shedding in, in a, a massive amount if you have a shedding dog and that they can the dogs can do that as a sign of stress so this is what you're looking at, kind of a, a picture of the, the same dog twice. One is the first one, I am worried, I stay away, which a lot of people might pick up on because the dog is now put, it's to do attention on the lead. The dog is now staring and its mouth is now kind of closed versus these really nice relaxed eyes that say I like you and this relaxed mouth which is really really lovely so this dog here the I'm worried stay away dog is a dog that I would not approach I would not touch and actually I would avoid any kind of eye contact with and this dog which is the same obviously the same dog on a, a, a different occasion or less maybe there's a less stress going on then I would actually invite you know invite that dog over to have a cuddle if they wanted to so that was uh, they're two the same dog Dog doing two different behaviors but subtly the very dog behavior is, is quite subtle dog body language so signals of a warning I don't know if anybody has had a dog or an incident with a dog who snapped at them or anything like that so these are the higher level stress signals where a dog is warning you that if you do not give them space that they might have to resort to snapping or biting Okay, so we've got what we call a freeze, which is really, really hard to show you in any kind of picture images, but that's almost when a dog, you put a dog on pause. It's like watching a movie and you put your video recorder on pause and a dog will do it for less than a second. Now, in dog bite world, uh, a there's no such thing as a dog nearly bit you. The dog chose not to bite you. So unless you have a muzzle on a dog or a barry or some kind of restraint on a dog, the dog didn't nearly bite you. The dog chose not to bite you. A dog can bite you about five times or more in one second. So they're very, very rapid. They're very, very fast. And there's no really avoiding it, even if you're another dog or a human being. So freeze will be a first warning sign and that will tell you that I want space, I'm not comfortable. Then we've got what we call a whale eye. A whale's eye is when you can see the whites, so just in this dog here, the whites of the dog's eyes. Quite often when you look at your dog, you can't see any white in their eyes, but dogs will have to actually orientate their head in a certain position for, them, for, for, for you to see the whites of their eyes. 
and that can that's just basically saying i would like some space a lot of dogs will do it if they're guarding something so if your dog is tends to be possessive of items or food you'll see that really 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 often the whale eye is is a really common one freezing whale eye for a dog guarding stuff is really really common so lip curls which you'll, most of you will know or you'll assume that's aggression here which is this this dog here at the top here these two dogs are doing lip curls where you can see the majority of the teeth okay um at the front and then obviously you've got communications that go along with this like a, a, a low growl and that kind of thing when you look at the dog at the top um here that i've got my little um red dot around you can see that that dog is barking but also it's it's asking the person to stay away so a lot of people will make the mistake of thinking a dog a nervous dog barking at them is just oh i need to show them that i'm friendly and i need to show them i'm happy and i'll approach that dog that dog is most of its body weight is on the back legs and it's trying to get away only that it's restricted on the lead so that dog is not inviting you to approach them under any circumstances no matter how cute that dog is it's uh, it's really important you know to listen to them and then that bottom middle picture there we've got a dog who's lip licking and they're kind of running away and that's just because the dog is being chased by two dogs and is a little bit tense and a little bit anxious but it's not it's not that uh, much of a warning so this is the cane the very famous canine ladder of aggression and you can see how many steps there are before a dog will actually bite you. Now, this is the, the most common ladder in most dogs. If they have had a normal experience and a normal upbringing, this is the amount of steps that it takes to make your dog bite you. Okay, so there's quite a lot of steps there. Now, notice the arrows all here are all going up. Okay. They're all going up because this is what your dog will start at. So if your dog is uncomfortable, they will start at um, just uh, yawning or blinking or nose licking or head turning away. And then if that doesn't work, it will go up and up and up and up until you get growling, snapping, biting, which are the, mo the more common of the ones that you, you, would, you might know of. But the problem with that is a lot of people, when they'll ignore all these ones in green which are really nice signals and they'll wait until the dog gets up to this kind of orange line when, and red line and then they'll start doing something about it but generally in human nature what we do when we see a growling dog or we hear a growling dog should I say is that we punish it so the difficulty with that is yes we don't want our dogs to growl but the dog growling is communicating to you that they need space it's not telling you that you're going to be bitten because it'd be much easier to bite you than to growl at you. They're saying, I want some space. And if you punish that, unfortunately in the dog world, what happens is the dog goes, uh-oh, I'm not allowed to growl because I get in trouble for that. So I'm gonna skip that step and I'm gonna just snap at you or bite you. So this is why, why we end up with dog bites in general is that everybody has ignored all of these signals up here and then we punished growling and snapping and then people get shocked why their dog is biting them so you can see what amount of steps and the reason there's lines and arrows going upwards only is once your dog these behaviors down here that are in red or sorry green and yellow uh, once they don't work for your dog they don't really repeat them that often they'll try them a few times but if you ignore them then the, the only thing they have to do is kind of vocalize how uncomfortable they are so uh, I always see growling as a positive thing. I see it as a really good thing because your dog is letting you know that they're how unhappy they are. Okay, so um, this is my <laughs> the most difficult thing when you're working with dogs. Most people get bitten by a dog who's wagging their tail. So a wagging tail for a dog does not mean I'm always happy and that I'm always friendly. Okay, so I'm just going to show you this little clip of this video and you'll be very, I want you to look at the dog's obviously tail. The tail is very much a waggy tail, but what is happening with the front part of the dog is obviously you wouldn't necessarily want to go into that kennel. But if you just look at the video of that dog's tail alone, that dog, people can misconstrue that as being, I want you to approach. So when we talk about wagging tails and dogs yes they can let us know if they're happy but it depends on the tail 
and wagging is definitely not a signal that I'm a happy dog. Most people end up getting bitten by dogs that have uh, a waggy tail. Um, it just means arousal, really. That's what it is in most scenarios. You'd want to be really, really well uh, researched and be able to decipher different um, body language tails. That's obviously not to say that anyone's dog who has a waggy tail is going to bite you either. That's why I say you have to look at the whole picture of the dog. What, can, what I want to see mostly when I look at dogs is actually their eyes. Their eyes tell everything. But it's not just the eyes, it's the eyes plus the body. So this dog here, this lovely golden retriever, has lovely soft eyes, he looks really relaxed, he just kind of looks a bit focused. And then we want to look at these other dogs. So I talked about earlier about whale eye when you can see the whites of the eyes, which you can see in some of these pictures, but you can also see it in this picture here. So I'm going to show you the full picture of the dog now. Um, just because the importance, you might say that the dog, you might be able to predict just by looking at these dogs' eyes, which ones you think are happy and which ones you think are not happy. But then they might surprise you because if you look at the whole body, then the dog might not so um, might not be so happy. So this first picture that I've pointed up, this Labrador, lovely, happy, relaxed, nice dog, very curious. Uh, he's actually looking for a treat. He's actually a lovely dog and uh, he's very relaxed. This next dog here is crouching behind a couch, not so happy, saying, please stay away from me. I'm really, really uncomfortable. But notice the ears. He's giving us a, a little bit of that cupping, that cupping motion I was talking about that says, please stay away from me. I don't want any conflict. I don't mean you any harm. And the problem here is that a lot of people will approach that dog and that dog is saying, please do not approach me. Then we've got um, our little dog here. He was showing a kind of a whale eye, but not in the right context. If you look at his whole body language, this dog is obviously having a blast with a ball and the photo just picked up and a little bit of whites of their eyes. So it's just saying that, yes, whites, looking at the whites of a dog's eyes in this scenario is important, but this scenario on this photo still, it's not always the case. You need to look at the dog's whole body language. This dog obviously is guarding a bone, which is the most famous sign. He is also saying, I don't want to cause any trouble. I don't want any harm to you, but stay away from me and my bone. Now you can treat this behaviorally, but we will never want to go and take that bone from that dog and say, well, try to be the leader or any kind of that nonsense or dominant over that dog because that dog is going to bite you. That's the most likely scenario with dogs that you're going to get a bad bite is resource guarding. When a dog is guarding something that they that's in their possession. I would recommend that if anyone has that problem to get a behaviorist and trainer involved because it can go very wrong very fast, but it's very easily treatable. And then our last dog here on the picture here is nice soft eyes. Uh, she's a lovely nurture and she's a pretty happy-go-lucky dog and she's nice and relaxed. So when we're looking at uh, different signals for dogs, we're going to, I'm getting all the depressing stuff out of the way first before we go to the nice stuff. But this is called distance increasing signals. And what that means is, is the dog is asking for space. So the dog is asking for you to move away. Okay. So the best thing is to look at some of the pictures. We've got our whale eye. This behavior actually is lovely because a lot of people think that automatically that dog is asking for their tummy to be rubbed. But if you look at their face, does that dog look like it's a dog that wants a tummy rubbed? No, it's doing a lick lick and it's avoiding eye contact. It's avoiding any kind of eye contact with you. So that dog is saying, please give me space. I am very vulnerable. I mean you no harm, but do not touch me. Please do not touch me. And often people will get bitten that way as well. Same with these dogs here. There's a nice little interaction. This black dog here is avoidant of this dog. And uh, this white and black dog, because he's coming on pretty strong. And if I had watched this further on, this black dog actually gives a snap at this rude black and white dog because he's a little bit too forward. So um, they are called distant. They're some of the distance increasing signals, which means the dog is asking for you to give space. Do not come closer or back away. And then obviously treat the problem or whatever the issue the dog is when you know what the problem was or what the trigger for the behavior. Now we're getting onto some nicer stuff. This is distance decreasing signals. So this means that the dog wants you to come closer. I enjoy your company. So when your dog licks around your face, um, the dog, this is a lovely 
uh, interaction between two dogs where this bigger dog is doing what we call self debilitating so crouching down to a puppy's level so lying on the ground to make itself and then dogs will do that with children as well to make itself as small as possible to be as interactive with another with a dog that's younger or smaller and you'll do that with small kids as well you'll kneel on the ground and get to their level and it means I mean no harm I want to interact with you and this boy is the dogs from earlier who did end up playing and this is our famous play bow so this stats here with a nice soft curled tails and front feet on the floor and bum in the air means I want to play with you so that's really good this is appeasement gestures this is means you'll often get these uh, for dogs and you're trying to train your dog actually so this is a big famous one the dog's paw is lifted slightly off the floor and dogs often do it because it means I am confused Okay, as opposed to this dog here, which is actually tra a trained dog to give the paw. So this dog here is saying, I'm confused. I'm not sure what to do. He's also a little bit stressed. But if your dog does that in training and you're trying to teach your dog something, they're trying, mainly because they want the food, but they're trying, but they haven't a clue what you're asking them to do. So that's an important one for a lot of you guys to, to know. Um, these are very dog specific ones. These are actually wolves. These are really hard. A dog, uh, if you're actually read dog body language, you'll actually be an expert in wolf body language because wolf body language is far more exaggerated than dog body language, ironically. So we'll often study wolf body language, even though they're two totally different species and you definitely shouldn't treat your dog like a wolf at all because they are not. But their body language can be quite similar, but it's often quite exaggerated. So these are both good ones. Um, this dog wanted to play, even though not to be fooled with showing of teeth watch the showing of teeth but then this lovely body language here that says i want to play and this again showing of teeth does not mean i'm going to attack you because you look at the whole dog's body language so um again another few examples of face licking you'll often get your you often get a, a dog doing this to other dogs which is an appeasement gesture and then we've got a little bit of display here that a dog will do with other dogs not with people so they don't look to do Dominance behavior. Dominance behavior is species specific. Your dog is never looking to be leader of the pack and your dog is not looking ever to dominate you, but they will do little behaviors with other dogs. And, and then we have this little cheeky wolf at the front who's trying to commandeer the whole scenario by putting his head on the other dog's tail. Oh, play signals. So these are really, really important when your dog is playing and your dog, uh, you want your, uh, you want to know what your dog is saying and um, there'll be lots of loose body language lots of moving dogs will mimic each other they'll uh, they'll copy each, copy each other back and forth so there'll be lots of that good play you should always have lots of stopping stopping between um, interactions when they're playing they should uh, it should stop and start and they uh, they might be lots of huffing there shouldn't be an awful lot of noise and um, dog play is to be quite quiet unless they're totally overexcited in which you can't have to monitor them so these are lovely i would recommend anyone who brings their dog to a dog park or lets their dog mix with other dogs to look up this on youtube it's called the zoom room guide to dog play gestures and um, i'm going to play a very small uh, portion of it now because it's quite long but it goes through pretty much every different little body language that your dog might do with another dog in a dog park and they're really good just so you know and also you play bow if you're if you play bow at your dog you should do a play bow as well get down on the floor put your bum in the air and invite your dog for play and dogs will be so happy if you start speaking dog back to them because they it makes them really really happy that you're kind of interacting with them so um you can see the little footage here of the different um the dogs miming each other and you have to remember that dog play sometimes looks like fighting but it's actually not so this is lovely play with the two dogs um in between each other and that's the zoom room guide to play gestures and you'll get that on youtube it's very it's kind of a nine minute video so i won't play any more of that if you're unsure about your dog and your dog play interrupt it better be safe than sorry if your dog is uh barking in another dog's face stop it before something's happened and give them a chime out if your dog is humping another dog stop it before it happens uh, anything happens however we do like in humping for the dog the dog being humped to correct the other dog so they learn it's very hard for you to correct behavior between your dog and, and someone else or another dog it's easier for them to do it um, if your dog is being bullied, remove them. Don't believe people in the dog park. Help your dog when you're needed. And if your dog is fearful, I'm a big, big fan of this. Comfort your dog. 
you can't make your dog more scared by being nice. So if you're afraid of a mouse and I give you a hug or I comfort you or I give you food or money, doesn't make you more scared of the mouse. It's only what the mouse does and the proximity of the mouse to how close they are to you or if the mouse bites you or leaps on you that makes you more scared of a mouse so being nice to your dog when they're nervous all it does is improve your relationship it improves your trust and it means when they're scared they'll come to you so it's a big 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 misconception in dogs that people say don't uh, comfort your dog when they're fearful because you're going to make fear worse that can't happen it can only happen if you also are crazy fearful and you start going ah but if you're calm, like you would be with a small child, it'll only help your dog. This is when play goes wrong. Actually, some of these play gestures are not very nice. There's some bullying or sort of bullying here where you're having two dogs having an argument and then this dog is having a cheeky uh, hump. You've got body slams here. That is not appropriate dog behavior. You've got a very unhappy dog here. This dog should not be in the dog park. It's very, uh, uh, not very nice. It's not, um, sorry, the dog's very nice. The dog is not very ha happy at all. Uh, it's very, very tense in the face. This is not a nice behavior. So when your dog grabs the bottom of another dog, that will cause a little bit of fight. The same as if your dog jumps up and grabs somebody's coat or grabs somebody's anything, that's totally inappropriate. This is full on force. This isn't actually a bad dog fight. It looks worse than it is, but it's not play and it's not nice. And this is bullying as well. So dogs do a lot of bullying and things like that. So just be careful and make sure your dog is not the bully dog or being bullied. So these are good or bad interactions when you're looking at dog body language. Actually, funny enough, only one of these is bad. I wonder, can you see it? And it's the most confusing of them because I've just told you that play bowing is a good thing and it is a good thing. But it's really funny, only one of these incidences end up in a dog fight. The reason we know this didn't end up in a dog fight is this pug is just sitting off looking into space. And if it was a dog fight, that pug would not be sitting there. Anything else um, uh, is, not, is not good evaluation on, um, on a picture. You need to see the whole, the whole thing. So this is the, actually the only one that turned into an actual dog fight where the lab was looking for play. The Zizla did not want to play. Notice this stiff body language here versus this loose body language. So when the lab went to play, the Zizla said, get away from me. Okay, so why do dogs bark? That's another form of communication. Does anybody know? The one reason why dogs bark is communication. So your dog is trying to tell you that, uh, tell you something. They're trying to tell, or they're worried about something or frightened of something. They're trying to communicate. Try not to punish the bark, try to treat it. So what can you do about it? If you yell at it, just like this picture, the dog will just go, well, we're both barking now. Um, it's you have to reinforce the behavior, find out what your dog wants without giving them a reward for it. You need to give them their food, you know, maybe some stimulation, effective timeouts, say things like find it to help them calm themselves down, teach the dog to be quiet on command, which is a really, really good one. Um, and then maybe calm them down in the environment wherever they are and use maybe calming music and that kind of thing, depending on what your dog, dogs bark for various reasons. They'll normally look at what they bark. A famous email I always get really regularly is my dog barks at nothing. No, they don't. They bark at sounds, they bark at noises, they bark at visual things, they don't bark at nothing. It's a waste of energy, they don't do it. And this is my favorite one. So we're, we're, you know, we're nearly finishing up now. So if you know that, have you seen your dog sneeze? Sneeze, sneeze after play, sneeze after an interaction, sneeze after something. Dogs don't have hair up their noses, so it's very, it wouldn't be very common for them to sneeze. They can get things up their noses, of course, and they can try and sneeze them out. But if you're playing with your dog or you come home and your dog does like sneezing, which sounds like t -t 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 -t, it means your dog is happy. Whatever you're doing in that moment in time, your dog loves and they're super excited and they want you to do more of it. It's harmless. It's lovely. It's telling your dog, you're telling you that they're very, very happy. So keep doing that.